Welcome back. We appreciate you spending some time with us here on this Sunday. Another thank you to Liz Highland for joining us in our first segment. We are jumping ahead, changing subjects here on the roundtable. Glad to have Quinn Neuendorfer back with us this afternoon, uh, sharing some time with us from the Lucas County Traffic Safety Program initiative here in Toledo. I, I bring you back on here because the month that we have been dealing with here, the month of March, I have not had an opportunity to sit down with you and just get your reaction uh, to, to the four incidents which we have reported early on in the month. You're talking from a stretch from March 2nd, 10 days, March 2nd to March 12th. The first one happening in Wood County, obviously the tragedy that befell those four, uh, five students that were in the car heading for off for spring break and a 69 year old driver from Perrysburg hitting them head on. Uh, your reaction to what we've been going through, Gwen? It feels like this happens all the time. In fact, it's sort of a rare occurrence. We've had a rash of them, which makes us think, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, you know, we're epidemic. going over the hill. Right. Yes, it's, it's epidemic. Mm -hmm. um, that was a horrible, horrible thing. Um, you're right, we've had, we had, you're saying four, right? Yeah. Right in a, a short period of time. There were three high profile. Let's look at the timeline if we can just show people once again what we're talking about. We start on March 2nd, that that early, early morning when those five students from BGSU were traveling in a car. Three of them killed in that accident. The wrong way driver also killed. We jump ahead and obviously there you see some of the footage from the OHP dash cam video. Uh, Winifred Line, the 69 year old coming head on toward the OHP uh, patrolman. Uh, let's move ahead and go ahead and show that graphic again. From March 2nd, we go to March 5th. This came into our station, a wrong way driver reported on I-280, driver never found. You jump ahead, I believe the next one happened uh, just a few days after that. And that, of course, is one that was highly publicized. A driver, a 37 year old female driver takes off uh, from uh, Levis Commons and allegedly gets on going the wrong way once again, makes it all the way from Perrysburg to Salisbury Road, the Maumee exit, and eventually gets pulled over and is now being charged. And then, of course, we go to the 12th, the morning of the 12th, which you have those uh, two people, two individuals killed in that wrong way accident, go head on into a Penske truck on I-75, not too far from the Bancroft exit. So you, you say because these all happened within a 10 day span, in our minds, it's epidemic proportion. But I ask you for your reaction from that, but also your reaction to the reaction. Well, I think the reaction is good because it's going to make people think a little bit longer and harder when they're driving that I better keep my eyes on the road and my mind on what I'm doing mm -hmm. in case some in case I encounter something like this. It's best to stay in the right lane. Yeah. Get over to the right if you see somebody coming at you. You and I had a conversation before we ever started here, and I, I, I asked, you know, do you even know? Are there, <laughs> because it's been a while since I took my driver's test, but <laughs> are they, is defensive driving still that key element in training drivers? And do you think there, I've had you on here before, and I've asked you the question about retraining drivers, and should there be, and I'm not just talking, older drivers. I'm talking, should there be 10 year spans where people have to re up? Oh, I don't know about that. Um, people that receive tickets and, and get a certain amount, a certain number of points have to go back for a defensive driving class. Yeah, but not if you're not getting caught. Well, no, but um, I mean, I'm playing if, devil's you're a, advocate. if you're a driver that is sort of reckless, speeds, does things they shouldn't, gets tickets, and has to go back for defensive driving class. Mm -hmm. I don't get tickets. Yeah. You don't get tickets. Do we need to go back and take a defensive driving class? Mm -hmm. I'm all for education, um, and that's what we're doing right now. We're educating the public. You were telling me we saw all over the St. Patrick's Day holiday a time when uh, a lot of local law enforcement were worried because it fell on a Saturday, fell on a weekend, the weather was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And there was concern there that that would carry over into accidents, into uh, more tragedies, unfortunately. And some of the checkpoints here in Lucas County, tell, tell our viewers what you found. We had two checkpoints on Saturday night from 8 to 1, and we had no DUI arrests. Zero. Zero. Perfect. Wonderful. And that's the goal of a checkpoint. 
I know sometimes people think if you don't arrest 10 drunk drivers, it wasn't a good checkpoint. And you said there were over 300 vehicles that went through? Almost 350 okay. through the two checkpoints. What do you attest? I mean, <laughs> what, what's your thoughts on why that happened that way? I think people knew. I think people knew that police would be out. Mm -hmm. I know I sent out press releases. We did some table tents and some bars and restaurants in Lucas County. Um, I, hopefully people are getting the message yeah. because these wrong way crashes so many times involve alcohol. People don't, you could put a hundred flashing lights up at the do not enter yeah. sign. And if somebody's drunk, they're not going to see it. They're going to get on anyway. And that was one of the things I wanted to bring up, one of the comments in a Toledo Blade article that came out not too long after the March 12th incident happened. And Michael Stormer, ODOT's district planning manager in BG, said uh, federal and state regulations require a wrong way, which you mentioned, a do not enter and a one way sign to be posted at the bottom of an exit ramp to discourage motorists from entering the wrong way. He said, ODOT exceeds the minimum requirements, posting two of each of those signs at most exit ramps and painting pavement marks, so on and so forth, where it's appropriate. So is it your contention as well that the state of Ohio is doing enough to mark these exits? Um, if you're a sober driver, anybody can make a mistake. Maybe you're from out of town or you're a little bit confused. You get on and you realize, I'm going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. You're sober, you realize that. And you turn around or you take some action to get out of the situation you're in. Yeah. If you're drunk, you don't know. You don't care. You're just going. So, I, ODOT ha does um, put the signs up. And like uh, Mr. Stormer said, twice as many as they need. Yeah. Um, if they put four or eight up, I don't know if it would stop an impaired driver from getting on and going the wrong way. Gwen, our time was tight this afternoon. Uh, we appreciate you taking some time and hopefully uh, these conversations will lessen I hope watching. So. Thank I you so really much. I really hope so. Thank Stay you. Stay with us. We'll Thank wrap you. things up for this afternoon right after this.